Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel Transcendence. My name is Christian Ramirez, and on today's episode with Kevin Seaman, we have a very special guest. We have Jeff Tolley. Jeff Tolley had his own near-death experience, and he's here today to share a little bit of that, as well as how that can open us up into other topics. I hope you enjoy. With near-death experiences, it is like a bridge that will open other things, because we need that. We need something that at least opens the minds of people because of where they've been, I guess. For me specifically, my near-death experience did change everything, but it allowed me to also accept all the all the stuff that came after. So right. my, my stuff out there is near-death. I don't like, I mean, I'm getting to a point where I probably won't want to share my near-death experience really anymore. What's out there for my near-death experience, I don't think I could do any more justice with it. The more I talk about it, the more I'll just ruin the message. It's really been put out in the best way I could probably articulate it. It's just kind of out there. It's like, oh, you know, there it is. Go, go find it. You get to a point, I think, where you only want to talk about something. Where for me, my that, like I said, that's that's like a, a doorway into my the rest of my stuff, which is it just gets crazier, nuttier. It goes into ET stuff. I mean, all kinds right. of stuff, which I think that we need to, you know, people need to go down that road more because, like I said, it's a bridge to that stuff. Uh, I thought you did excellent uh, articulating it. Uh, you, yeah. you have a lot of power behind your messages and everything, and it's very clear, I thought. Yeah, absolutely. I think I've done a great service doing it. It's just moving forward in doing it. How, you know, I don't know how many, I don't really know. It just, you know what I mean? It becomes repetitive. That's all. It becomes a very repetitive. But I, I, some people yeah. need to you know, hear that because depending on someone's audience, they've never found me. They want to hear that, you know, so they're going to get, they're going to get what they get from me at the time. Cause it's going to come out the same, but different every time I say it, you know, but still right. repeating, repeating, repeating yourself is uh, <laughs> one of the primary things you have to do when you're trying to uh, gain a following or spread a message. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so are you guys, so a near death experience is one thing. Do you guys um, touch on other subjects or go into other subjects? I, that's, my area of expertise because <laughs> I realized while researching near-death experiences that the actual, like, just like you said, it's a gateway into other stuff. And I started yeah. reading up on the raw, raw materials and listening to a channeler named Bashar and he talks about near-death experiences and he explains how we're moving into fourth density, how that is relating to everything. And I started to find all these clues and I'm like, wait a minute, these channelers are saying the same things, near-death experiences are saying the same things, hypnotherapists yeah. are saying the same things, uh, yeah. past life regression, they're all saying pretty much the same central message and that we're all going through a shift that's yeah. starting to expand and open everything up. And I remember watching one of your podcasts and you had mentioned uh, all of this stuff and you're like, well, that's what I really want to start talking about. So I was like, oh, that's awesome. So you were the first person I thought of because <laughs> I remember you actually getting into it. Not only did you have a near death experience, and, but you actually opened up and, the, and the field. And Christian yeah. said, um, said, Kevin, uh, we want this guy, Jeff, we should talk to him. And he said, it's going to be a little bit too far out for you in some areas. <laughs> <laughs> and and just, just so you know, Jeff, I'm a programmer, and I've been a programmer hey. for 38 years. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, the last 28 year, 20 years of my life. Uh, I'm a very logical person. Sure. Uh, and, and my family was not religious or spiritual growing up. Yeah, uh, I gained my own spirituality through uh, karate. So I'm a, sure. a, a national competitor in, in karate, and that hard physical yeah. exercise opened up my eyes and gave me some visualizations and things. And then I had a partial near-death experience a long time ago. I'll yeah. bring it up uh, in a second. Then, sure. and then I had a an assistant that had a near a full near-death experience that she told me about, and it was uh, very raw and very real. And I got it from her directly. And then after that, I started looking into it, and I just became sure that all this stuff is really happening. And I'm trying to yeah. kind of talk, talk to other logical people like me and convince them away from the materialist-only viewpoint. Well, you know what? It's, it's all very logical. This stuff's all very logical, too. It is. Yeah. Like, it's very logical. There's nothing, like, yeah. it makes more sense than anything else, actually. Yes. When you really think about it, there's all these answers we don't have, but in reality, the answers that are given make so much damn logical sense. And, yeah. it, and it should, really. 
So when I, you know, when I went out of my body, for example, it was so goddamn obvious, right, from that perspective, what I was missing. But, you know, we can't see it when we're in it, we're in the fog of our own life. But it's so fucking obvious. It was just so obvious to me that, oh, shit, we got these things that keep, like, challenges that keep coming around and around and around. They're the same thing, different face. And our my whole goal is to actually, like, get through this or learn something instead of running away and running away and they keep coming. It's pretty obvious, right? But it's a, that's the thing. There's so many obviouses to it, but we're just kind of stuck in our own uh, like misunderstanding of what it is. Or we think that maybe life is too hard for us to fully understand. So let's best not even think about it at all. Right. And then religion has yep. been a really weird part of kind of like gatekeeping reality from people so that they don't even think or bother to ask because they're too little to even think to question God's design. How dare you think you know anything around creation? You're not smart enough. It's just kind of funny. Like, so when you really give thought to it, it's not as difficult, but there is a lot of time that goes into understanding it. So with me in my life, I choose to play my life, not live it. When I've now started playing my life, I now become successful in it, opposed to the way I used to do it before. So I get the results now from actually winning the game of life, opposed to just like kind of taking it as it comes and not knowing what the hell I'm doing. I have real direction now, real focus with what I'm trying to achieve in my life. Therefore, I get that. This is what I get now because that's what I'm doing. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Right. But I when never did you was gain that. Yeah, when did you gain that that focus? Is was it uh, recently or, or at the beginning? And how far well, back does it go with you? So, well, my near death experience was what was it, two thousand ten? So twelve years ago. So yeah, mm-hmm. twelve years ago was, but that was like I said, that was the very beginning because my story <laughs> gets nutty. Um, that was the beginning of how everything opened for me. But when I was or had that experience, it it shifted my perception and allowed me to see my life, um, my own personal life and the lives of others that I've, you know, affected in such a different way that I couldn't help but to notice it for what it was. But it gave me this way of looking at life, not from that, I guess, from my own eyes point of view or from this like really diluted kind of like, I don't know, like, I don't know how to describe it. You come into this world and we just kind of have no clue, really. So it, it gave me a clue. It would be like giving me a cheat code for a video game. That's what it was like. I was granted something <laughs> like, oh, this is how it works. This is what's actually going on. Now go back and now try it again. And that's, that's kind of like what it was. So then from that moment, it was beginning to use what I learned, the perspective, and then actually apply it in my life. Where a lot of in the spiritual community right now, I feel like a lot of it's theory based. There's no practicality. So what I'm trying to do is bring real practice to people that can actually produce real results, which is what I've had in my own life. Because there is just a lot of theory and a lot of outside kind of seeking for answers that really aren't outside of you. They're, they're within you. So the, the search really should be inside. Like know thyself, right? That's right. really what it's about is the more you know yourself, the more you can actually participate in this life to the fullest. And, yeah, uh, I think Ray, like Rupert does that really well. Uh, he's a guy I like to watch. Uh, Rupert Spira. Do you, sure. do you know him, Jeff? No. Oh, uh, um. Oh yeah, he, he 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 learns everything from introspecting in a, in a, him himself, but sure. he doesn't need to gather theories and and uh, verify it with other people. But he has yeah. this, but he has things so well laid out and defined just through self exploration, and, and I love that about. Him. Yeah, you don't yeah. need to val- it doesn't need to be validated because it's going to validate itself in your own life. Because no matter what you believe or buy into will reflect out regardless of its, you know, weight or not, it's going to show itself. That's what's weird about beliefs because they'll show themselves to be true, whether they're true or not. Right. So you're always buying into the idea that they're true, even if they're not true. It's so, it's so weird. Yeah. But you get to look at the idea that you get to choose what belief, right? That's the whole power is that we actually get to decide for ourselves what we buy into, not right. what the system that we're born into decides for us, which ultimately is what's happened. We've been given the the things to believe in. We've been given this whole program to buy into from an early age to live our lives a certain way. 
which we all know now that that way is total, like, just, just not, it's not fulfilling. It right. uh, leads us down a road of like burnout, just doing what you need to do or feel like you need to do just to get by. That was kind of given to us at an early age. And it's up to us to decide how we're going to live our lives. That's on us. That's, That's kind of like the power with it. The near-death experience really yeah. gave that to me, that idea that I decide. I decide my meaning. I decide the meaning of my own life and what I do. That's on me. I decide the beliefs. I decide my actions. I decide yeah. how I'm going to yeah. go about my life and what I get. That's on me. Well said. I mean, for you, it's so real, but that's what I've come to, too. I think the difference between you and I is I haven't gone as far as you've gone into this the spiritual realm. I've yeah. definitely dipped in, and I understand it. And I've heard, yeah. uh, I, I've watched hundreds of first-hand hand recounts, and I, I research near death all, all the time. Yeah. Um, and and but I I know that there's. I, I just want to get everybody switched from the separateness model that they currently subscribe to, that is material materialist only, where they think the brain creates everything. And we're yeah. completely separate and nothing you do affects anybody and, and get them over to the connectedness model, which is how things are really working. And I think just by getting them to the, the trailhead of near death experiences, as you mentioned in the beginning, that's the yeah. key to just get them to listen to them. And um, it's kind of amazing too, to see how it's already starting to shift. Like from when, you know, I was born in the nineties. So seeing that shift, so like now and people are talking about all of this stuff, it's becoming more yeah. mainstream. It's just yeah. like a domino effect and kind of like what you were talking about with belief systems. Uh, Daryl Inka, the channeler for Bashar, who apparently channels an ET being that says the same things about belief systems and how when we're young, we're kind of like belief thieves. You know, we, we pick up beliefs, we accept them yeah, as true. They don't even belong to us. <laughs> yeah. So and then, you know, He's like, what do you believe to be true? And then that's where a lot of our insecurities, a lot of other problems come up. Like, what do you believe to be true about yourself that yeah. is stopping you from doing that thing or stopping you from saying that thing or expressing your opinion, telling yeah. yourself how you really feel? And he says, once you change that shift internally, your outer reality will then change. Absolutely. It was yeah. very obvious that um, when I came back and I made the internal changes, to see how fast and how radical the, the external world changed from those changes was proof and evidence even more than the NDE that, oh, you know, we're not separate. We're not, we have control over our world. It's not like we're put in a world. Okay, there you go. You're, you're now, you're now um, victims to the entire, you're victims to your environment. You're victims to those, to those around you. You have no power where if, I were to change me and then the outside world changes, including the people that are in it. That means that I have full power and control over my outside world, not the other way around. So therefore the work must be within. You have right. to go in. So, but that inner work is really, um, it's interesting because it's so complex and it's layered, but you have to be able to become like a detective, like a real serious detective in your own life and asking yourself, Okay, let's go all the way back and find out what I chose to believe, whether it's true. Like, okay, let's say I chose to believe something. Okay, is it true? Where did it come from? Is that source, like, do they know what they're talking? Like, where does it, where does that come from? Is it true? And can I look into it and verify for myself whether it's true or not? And then mostly you'll find out it wasn't. So now you're going to be on a road of having to change that belief to be more, um, to be, I guess, in your own investigative way, of what you found to be more truthful. If you want to buy into something, you should actually be behind that. You should be behind the work of buying into something. You know how many times when we, when we were young and we were told a rumor and we found out weeks later, whatever, it was <laughs> bullshit. But for that week or so, we believed it. We just did. We took face value what we we're being told. But these beliefs though, that's kind of a small, in a little small way, but these beliefs can be very life altering and life changing for how our lives play out. So if we choose to buy into a belief that is life altering, we should probably ask ourselves, is it real or not? Am I going to base all my, my whole livelihood, my decisions around this belief? And if so, is it real? Is it true? Like where, what, what is it? Like, it's just the investigative work that needs to be done. That's where it's, um, that's where it's difficult, but that's kind of like my mission is to bring 
people into understanding that they got to do the work. They got to investigate themselves on all these different levels of who they are so that they can get control of it and then move forward. That makes sense. Yeah, I've been trying to, um, uh, I, I kind of always send the same message. Uh, long before I learned about near-death experiences, which is only a little over a year ago, I, I started knowing about them. Uh, but I, I, through karate and law of attraction and, and those sorts of things, yeah. I'm always telling people that you're the one that's creating, you know, creating your life. And it's hard for people to understand or accept that because it takes a lot of responsibility to accept the fact that you're the creator well, uh, for everything. Yes, a lot of people have given, and I see it time and time again, and I always kind of shake my head when I hear it. They have way too much power and like God to make decisions for them. Or if it's God's will, right? If it's like, mm -hmm. no, no, that's no, stop. Like yeah. you're giving so much power to something that you don't even know what it is. Like you don't know, just stop giving power over like that and just ask yourself, like the, the will would be from if it's your will. Is it your will? Is that what you want? So there's way right. too much power that's been exchanged over. But you know what? I know that how people can think, I guess, oh, I'm the creator of my reality can be daunting um, because then they have to now actually do something with their reality. They can't now be victims. So maybe there's like all exactly. these reasons for why they would rather not want to believe it because that means now they have to take responsibility for every single bad thing that has ever happened to them. Right. And there was a book uh, that I read called Presence, Kindness, and Freedom. And I've sent you pictures of the book, Kevin. And this woman became deaf. And eventually, one day, a being just showed up in her kitchen and started to talk to her. And she started to channel his information. And he's no sure. longer in the physical. He goes by the name Aaron. And he talks okay. about this. And he says that we have to go through these situations so that we learn certain lessons. And yeah. whenever you have like a knee jerk reaction or something makes you feel a certain way, or you keep yeah. running into the same situations over and over and over again, and you get this feeling from it, those feelings are kind of like a, a gauge or a meter to tell you that what you have, what needs healing pretty much, what you need to face within yourself. And he talks about all this and it just lines up and it, that's that's what's crazy. And it's just when I try to explain the mechanics to people, sometimes they get offended or they're like, and I'm like, I'm not trying to diminish what you went through. You know, I know because there are some heavy yeah. topics like being raped or like these heavy topics. But there are other books like your soul's plan books, which uh, hypnotists work with mediums to go into pre-birth planning and um, asking those really big questions like why would a soul choose to go through those certain experiences and they kind of lay it out and answer that question and he says from that perspective when you can actually understand that you came here for a purpose and you can like confront it it becomes a lot easier not to say that the challenges won't be there but it becomes easier knowing that you have a certain plan in, for your life and you know following your passions working on your challenges the things that you're not very good at or your insecurities and so on and so forth of course and that's like the game i talk about like yeah. you know that when i'm looking at something like oh this is a level i need to pass opposed to a day i have to get through it's Correct. a lot more uh, adventurous and getting mm -hmm. through it it's a lot more fulfilling to be like oh i was able to pass it i was able to pass a test that i placed there for myself so you know and i, I and i understand too like because there's a different perspective on it when you're talking about why would someone go through all these things while well, we don't really have the answer but it could be it could be one thing from karmic to also what they were going to gain from it there's all right. kinds of reasons but yeah just to label yourself a victim is not the way to go about it right because right. many things if you ask many people that have had horrible things happen to them myself included and they come through it they would always say that they, they're now so much stronger braver they got so much more from the experience than without it not saying that that wasn't hard or whatever, but it does develop a, on a soul level. I would say like resistance for us is very, you know, soul um, enhancing if we right. can get through a lot of these struggles and resistances. So yes, it's like the perception needs to change really more and less around the perception change on how you go about living your life, because there's going to be things that are going to be hard Things are going to happen that are going to be out of your control, let's say. It's all, in a sense, how you want to um, go about 
with that, like how you respond to something right. is ultimately the power you have. If something's happening, let's say that's, let's say bad or whatever. So it's there, it's happening. So you can either respond to it with exactly equal to what it is as being bad or negative, or you can respond to it like, as in, <laughs> wait a second, I have something to gain or learn here. Right. So I can actually so do you, gain something from this. Um, <clears throat> do you think that the reason our souls uh, come into human body and are put into a very difficult situation that is often described as like hell, like this earth, kind of sure, like hell compared yeah. to NDE world, is this difficult situation we're in, is it so that we can figure out how to uh, give and receive love even in those difficult times where we become better at receiving and giving love? So when we go back to the spirit world, we're able to do it more freely? I'm thinking maybe. That that's maybe the way, reason this? Yeah, maybe, but I think there's, there's, other, there's, there's other levels or reasons for that. So this is my, okay, this is my, this is a theory, but this is my theory, okay? So when yeah. we have places okay. like this that are like low or dense, we'll call it like the hell on earth that we're all kind of experiencing this kind of place where it's very harsh and the way things are run politically and wars and all that stuff. Um, we have, we start off as a energy. So let's look at that energy is very separate from everyone else because it is, we're not all born equal, not on the biological sense and not on the damn energetic sense. This idea that we're born equal is ridiculous. However, let's say we're all different energetically and we all, what I call is a soul signature. So we all have a soul signature. Let's call that signature a resonance. So we come into life with a resonance. I believe my theory is that when the whole goal really is to alter that resonance by the time we leave through life experience. Life experience will alter the resonance of our pitch, our soul. So actually what we get is soul growth through life experiences such as this, because they're so damn hard. We get a lot of resistance, so it actually builds upon on the soul level, which then gives us a key, if you will, to experience other energies that are different or of a different energy of resonance. That's my theory on why a lot of times we come to places like this. We're actually trying to develop on the soul level. Right. That, that falls on my yeah, the research too, as far as like uh, learning how to be more compassionate, loving, and your vibration yeah. raises. That being yeah. I just mentioned talked about this, and he says that as you go through a particular lifetime, that energy will shift and change, especially yeah. if you chose not to run away and chose to face your, yep. you know, your okay. yeah, and that's, uh, you'll get that growth through mm -hmm. actually overcoming, not running. Right. And yeah. there was, uh, again, back to that Bashar ET being who's coming through is saying, we're talking to you guys because that's what's happening. The shift is happening and we're here yeah. to help facilitate that. And that situations, circumstances and events are fundamentally neutral, that life is meaningless, but yeah. you give it the meaning. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying. We, yeah, we have that. Yeah, yeah exactly. that's the power. Yeah. And that is the, that's it. It's yeah. like, yes. Yeah, absolutely. That's the way All I see All three of us can see the same circumstance and still give it a different meaning. Which is hard for people to think that there's no meaning to life. Right. But you know what I mean? Like, doesn't mean there's no meaning. It just means that there is meaning. We're just the ones that need to assign the meaning to it. That's the power we have. So when we live our lives that's in that way, think about how much we get from that. Yeah, that, that I think is what people have trouble making that jump, but to take that much personal responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Even though I... <laughs> it's happening. Yeah, it's obvious. It, you're right, personal responsibility. But here's the thing, when I, because I've taken so much personal responsibility, I've put it all on myself from the experience I've had. But now that I do that, my life is so much better and greater than I could have ever dreamed it possible. Because I allowed myself to be in full control of everything that happens. And so, therefore, I now have all the responsibility. Therefore, my life, like I said, is better than it ever could have dreamt possible. So, yeah, that is a big leap, though, for people. You're absolutely right. You got to get them from that that to, you know, you got to leap them somehow. I don't know how, but I know religion is is stopping that. Right. And uh, he that's something else that Bishar had mentioned because somebody had questioned and asked him, well, what about Jesus? And he says the thing is with Jesus is that the mis the message was 
misconstrued. And what happened was the message was be like me. Don't externalize me. Externalize like, you know, God is separate from me. I am like God's son. So I'm separate from you. Be like me. Go within yourself and you'll start to learn. And that's funny because it's like when they go into the Cathars and uh, Mary Magdalene, it's a very different story about like shamanism pretty much like as far as like going within yourself uh like the first spiritualists about learning how to go within and then the changes will start to happen and you'll start to see how much powerful you are Um, yeah messages like that and also the central message being this is something he says a lot and i tell everybody this is that circumstances don't matter state of being matters yeah as in like um no matter what happens like i said you decide exactly response so exactly. the response would be your, your state of being, right? Exactly right. So, yeah, and absolutely. I align perfectly he, with that because yeah, that's says, how I've seen it for sure. He says it, it matters here. how you yeah. respond to the situation. And he says that the universe will show you these challenges, especially if you have something you're still working on and it comes around again. If you respond yeah. the same way to the same circumstance, you haven't changed. You haven't changed. <laughs> exactly. Do you know Bashar? <laughs> Because it's just like, yeah, it's. Pretty, it's <laughs> I've I've heard of Bashar, yes. Yeah, um, but that's I don't know a lot much. about it. I actually stay. I do my best, not you know, not necessarily channels, yeah. but I. You'll notice that I don't know anybody in this world specifically. So what I've done is I I do that on purpose. I've crafted. I I wanted to craft my own message from what works for me specifically. I don't want to get myself that makes filtering sense. other people's ideas that makes and then sense. finding myself tweaking their own messages. I want to keep mine as authentic and real to me, but what has worked for me. And I feel like if I'm listening to other people, I may be like, ah, I like that. And then put my own spin on it. I want to keep it as real to my own life experience as possible because then I know it's, it's as real and authentic and it works the way it works for me. I don't want to get it jumbled. And that's right. why I stay away from anyone in this world really I, i've heard of names i get it i know there's a lot of that people makes sense. Out there i've just stayed away from it the best i can to keep it i love that philosophy yeah, oh, yeah it's like uh rupert spira yeah. pretty much and what's yeah. cool even though like i've looked everywhere and stuff just trying to figure certain things out answer some questions i like also finding the common threads and i'm like wait a minute jeff said this and wait a minute and then it's just yeah. like, I don't take one person, what they say is truth. Like I find a common thread and like develop it for myself because I can't guarantee what they're saying is true, you know? So of I have course, to- Of course, I know for me, yeah. like I've been given a gift of life experience that right. is really wrapped up in growth. So I see a lot of it and I see the changes that I make being like, I just been given this gift of like real harsh darkness and struggle. So I've watched the changes happen. I've seen it enough to know when it's altering and changing. So I think that that contrast was a gift so that I could understand exactly what I was doing to see the difference. You know, if some people's lives are very, maybe on one line, it's all, it's, it's not bad, it's not good, but maybe they wouldn't see the changes to the degree that I've seen because of what I've been through. So there's right. that. And I, I just wanted to interject that, <clears throat> yeah, if you have an experience, if you have a near death experience or, or more like you've, you've had Jeff, it, it, it makes most sense to do what you're doing, to be pure about your message and not mix yes. it. With other, that's the right thing to do, I think. Yeah, I want to keep and, that the best I can, yes. Christian, I was wondering uh, if you're going to ask Jeff to re- recount his story, uh, to summarize his story. Uh, that's that's the Kundalina. Uh, uh, Kundalina. Kundalini. Uh, the Kundalini. 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 Sorry about that. <laughs> You mean talk about, about you want me to talk about my Kundalini experience? No, I just want I just wonder if Kristen's going to have you um, you know outline your story if that's and then I have questions to which ask one, you but I which story would you want? <laughs> that's what you, want we were, NDE, that's what, you want my I can talk about my NDE story again like it doesn't take too long but I mean I can give you let me try to do it in a way that's um, maybe more summarizing but I think it's good we can get into yeah. things where if I'm talking about it and then we can kind of open yeah, up to like other questions stuff. come up around what that represents, what it means, what it did for me, you know, that'd um, be great. Yeah. Stuff like that. And then from, I guess, then, like I said, the near death experience was the beginning really. So after that is when everything really started to ramp up for me. Um, cool. I know that Daryl, I have something very common with that Daryl Anka guy you talk about, because I know that he, 
as well had a very close encounter with an extraterrestrial. And I think that was the beginning of his channeling a, right. a, like enterprise. I think that's kind of what started his channeling, right? Mm -hmm. It was the, that experience. So I had something really eerily similar to what happened. It was uh, a ship too came about a hundred feet above head. It stopped. Um, I had this amazing amounts of energy blasted all around me. Um, but I did hear there was a telepathic communication. It was very short, very simple, very sweet, but ultimately it was like, everything's going to be okay. So there wasn't anything around anything else. It's just like, everything is going to be okay. Now I can see why maybe that communication would have been had at the point at the moment, because after that, everything wasn't fucking okay. <laughs> uh, but I can see why holding on to that could have been like, ultimately everything's going to be okay. Um, I know there's a similarities there because from that period of the, the UFO experience really did launch me off into a, a very different direction in my life for was, sure. Was that after your NDE or was it? That was after the NDE. Yeah. Yes. I had an NDE. I had a Kundalini experience that followed very shortly after. And then I had the, the UFO experience that landed. This is all within, I think a year, a year's time, I believe. Oh, wow. That'll happen. Uh, what you, yeah. Uh, Kristen, I don't want to override your questions. Oh, no, no. You're but, uh, <laughs> uh, what is yeah. your, what happened during your NDE? Like, wh uh, what did you learn from that? Um, yeah, let me get, I'll get into it. So like yeah. my NDE, I think, I think it's really important to start off with my NDE as far as like why I died. I think that's a great way to start it because that is the whole yeah. purpose. The NDE for me, that it's a near death experience. One of the main I think one of the most important things to share in an NDE, in my opinion, is the whole reason to why I died or how that happened. So for me, it was a suicide attempt. Um, it was successful, although not, as I'm here, but um, I decided that I wasn't going to live any longer. Life was just too unbearable. I was a drug addict. I lost my younger brother a year prior. Things were not, and in my mind, could never get any better from that point forward there, I think it was just, I was just in a too, too rough of a spot to consider to even move forward. So I decided one day that I would kill myself and I took an entire bottle of narcotic painkillers. Um, not only did I take an entire bottle, I also injected a whole bunch as well, just to make sure that if somehow the pills were taken out of me, I would, I'd have it in my bloodstream. So I would still die. I was very serious about killing myself incredibly serious as in I was not going to fail. It wasn't like a, a cry for help kind of thing. It was no, I'm leaving now. Goodbye. There was no mm -hmm. thought ever thought of me coming back. So me being back is weird. And like, I still kind of have that. Wow. I can't believe I'm fucking here. Even 12 years later, it's very odd because the choice was made so strongly. The actions were so powerful on that decision. It's, just, it's still kind of like, wow, I'm here. So it was all in, in that sense of a, of a suicide attempt. So um, I took it. Everything went really black is what happened. I remember the instance where I knew I was dying because darkness began to trickle in from the outside of my eyes. And I was like, okay, here it goes. Like I knew it. I guess I had some sense of fear maybe or it wasn't really fear. I was just like maybe curious to what, what, what was going to be. I, I don't really know. I had no clue what could have possibly been. Although when I was really young, I did have experiences with ghosts. So I knew the idea of like spirits kind of could exist. So what, I, to what realm or to what that looked like, I had no damn clue. But um, I guess I was curious to what could have happened, but still afraid of maybe what that might have looked like. And then... A lot of time had went by, actually, I don't know exactly, but about 20 minutes probably roughly went by where I have no recollection of anything, nothing. And the next moment, I am now floating above my body in an ambulance with um, paramedics working on me below in an ambulance. That's the very next thought or moment or awareness that I had was being in spirit, looking down on the body. So it was that moment where there was kind of like a weird, oh, wow, I'm dead oh, wait a second, I'm actually not even dead at all. I'm more alive than I've ever been in my life. Right. So it was like given, you know, it's like we always kind of wonder. I wonder what happens when you die. Well, the wondering for me is over. <laughs> there is no wondering. When we die, we actually live. 
And more than anything, I honestly would say that being here is more death than what we think is life. Mm -hmm. This is death. Being dead is actually alive. So this whole fight <laughs> always stay alive and we must survive and we must stay alive is ridiculous. I'm not saying that we shouldn't be alive and we should experience it, but the idea this fight that we have to stay alive really at the end of the day doesn't really matter, you know, ultimately, because we're, we're actually fighting to stay dead, <laughs> really, as weird as yeah. that sounds. <laughs> Right. I, I, I was always I was thinking that um, you should you should go out doing something you love. If, if yeah. you're doing something or doing something you really care about, if you yeah. die that way, why not? That's probably going to be great. <laughs> I think no. I think uh, yeah. I agree. I, I think there. You know, there's one kid. He was younger and he died mountain climbing, but that's what he loved to do, and he died on the mountain. And I think there's no better way to, to go out when you're on top, right? Yeah. I mean, so it, I, it, I, I agree. Uh, that that is one thing that's changed completely in my mindset in the last year. Uh, I'm 39 now, and uh, I started learning about NDEs a year ago. Is sure. that I, I now I now don't, I'm not afraid of death in it, but in a new courageous way. Like I'm willing to take risks with my life yeah, for things good. that I believe in. Yeah, yeah because good. why not? Yeah, of yeah. course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's it's beautiful what's waiting, and 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 there's so much meaning, and you review things. You might as well go for. So that's the message I send, you know, go for, go for it while you're here and don't, don't be afraid to yeah. die. But as I was growing up, my family instilled a fear of dying in me. I'm sure. And so, yeah. did, so does like modern, you know, science uh, gives you that feeling. Yeah. That it's going to be blackness. They, they tell you <laughs> it's going to be blackness. Yeah. That's, I think a lot that's, of scientists are like atheists though, aren't they? Like, cause they don't really, like, a lot of them don't know. They don't, they don't have, I don't know. That's what why are, I love but, when yeah. they have. Yeah. Those are like my favorites when like a scientist or a doctor has an NDE and then they come yeah. back and they're like, okay, I was wrong. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and then they yeah, start, they like, you know, Dr. Yeah. Evan Alexander and, and some other good ones. Well, I think but, NDEs now are happening more so because we brought medicine to a point where we can revive exactly. people back. Mm -hmm. So then now we're having these experiences where people are leaving and then coming back. Right. Um, but you still got to be pretty close, I think, for the soul to actually leave the body. Because right. there's a lot of out-of-body experiences. They're mm -hmm. called OBEs. And then I think there's a lot of confusion between that and an NDE, mm -hmm. which is why I say, like, what's really important from someone's NDE testimony should be how they died. Because that will be telling in whether they died or not or just had an OBE. Mm -hmm. Now, what I think is that people, there's different, I think there's different realms to what's happening between OBEs or NDEs as far as where they're right. going. So there's, a, they, I think OBEs are, are still within the confines of their belief system. Mm -hmm. When they pop out and they see Jesus and stuff, a lot of it's reflecting their beliefs because they're actually not out, but they're still in, in this altered state of consciousness where NDEs are literally out. And it's a very different place, I think, where they're kind of reaching. And I think there's confusion there. That's At least a good from point. what I've seen, I'm kind of like, whoa, there's something going on that's not matching up for me. That's so there's there's something there. I don't really know what it is, but I, that's what I think is happening. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I kind of I've, I've seen the same. If you research uh, drug experiences, um, that that they're they're kind of random and all over the place. But if you look at near death experiences, there's these twelve or so themes that are yeah. present throughout all of them, and they're very consistent. Yeah, it's I think the different. NDE stuff is very, you know, and that's another thing. I haven't even, I haven't even listened to a full NDE experience other than my own. I've heard glimpses or, wow. I've, yeah, I know it's so weird. I've caught a couple people, like, but just saying a few things, but I've never listened to a full interview of someone's um, near death experience ever. Oh my god, that's amazing. Why, why don't you? There's so no, no, I just really don't know. I think I'm just like, I, I think I'm not interested as. Fucked up as that sounds, I don't think <laughs> I have an interest in someone else's um, story. I don't. It sounds weird. I don't know what it. I honestly a, don't know. In I a, just in a way that's well, well, that awesome, assistant, though. My, <laughs> my my assistant that had a near death experience. She had never researched it. Seven yeah. years after her near death experience, she didn't care to research it at all. Yeah, yeah. Maybe there's like I don't know what it is, but there's something that's kind of keeping me away, and maybe it's a part of the whole keeping my message or my thing. Um, straightforward as well. But I've, I've, I've caught a lot of people because I do, I do mentorships and stuff with a lot of people. And there's a lot of people that have had like OBEs 
or near death or it's like near death experiences, but I think that are like out of body experiences. So I hear a lot of people's accounts on the out of body experiences or NDEs um, from people that I, I talk with. But there, like I said, there's some weird correlation in what that is. So I don't, right. like I said, there's something there. But I do my best, I think, like I said, to keep things straight, streamlined for what I'm trying to accomplish. Because I know, I know too, with the amount of information out there on so many different things, it's just, I think it can be confusing for people right. with anything. Mm-hmm. You're trying to learn anything, and I think there's a lo- way too much yeah. um, going on. And I'm glad exactly. you brought that up. And to get people... Yeah, to get you got to get people to just look at near death experiences and uh, and change their materialist mindset. And yeah, there's too much information. Uh, yes, I'm trying to hone it down and and break down the materialist uh, arguments that they've had for so long. Sure. Um, yeah. 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 You, you don't want to throw when. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Chris. Oh no, I was just going to say when I was. I'm glad you brought up that point about the the differences because uh, growing up. I've had encounters with spirits and things and my mom has gone to like, usually we don't go to like an advertised psychic or something. It's usually like a friend of the family, someone who's gifted, who doesn't really advertise or do that stuff, you know, one of those people. And then they had told her that, uh, that I was gifted too. But I always like to reiterate to everyone is that everyone can do or has these abilities, you know, they could be latent and, um, I had trouble with sleep paralysis and I would see beings too. And, um, also when I went in, went to the hospital under general anesthesia, I left, it felt like I left. And that's when I started to learn that you're not supposed to dream under anesthesia at all. <laughs> and I yeah. was like, wait a minute, because when, where I went, I completely dissociated with Christian. I was just like, okay, I've done this a thousand times. I felt like I was being pulled somewhere. And yeah. I've also had a, uh, an experience leaving my body in sleep paralysis because I started to research it because I didn't want to be scared anymore. And they say, oh, that's the perfect time to astral project because that's when your, your body's asleep. And if you try, sure. if you calm down, they say to be careful though, kind of like what you mentioned, because they say, when you start to leave your body, the state of being, the mindset you have at that time is amplified so you can draw in certain things based on yeah. your fears, your beliefs, yeah. and you will experience it. But, yeah, this is why people say that they've been to hell and they all yeah. this stuff, right? No, yeah. that's what I'm saying. And it's they're, self-imposed. They're, they're, yeah, they're going, they're, they're, they think that they're, they're having some near death, but they're actually having an out-of-body experience, which is a very different place. And... I have seen the difference in correlation there. There's something, right. Something's got to be said about that anyway. Right. I've seen that. But regardless, um, for me, what I got, and I think near-death experiences as well, um, for me, I got what I needed for my own life specifically, where maybe others will get whatever they get, they get for their own life specifically. What I got was how my life, what I did, the things that I did, how they affected others, which going back to the story, this is what I saw, is I saw and felt, not just seen, but felt all the um, the pain, if you will, or any sort of emotions that would be negative, but also good, um, which by the way, was more bad than good, right. but the emotions that others had with, with just me interacting with them. So I, I got to see from see and feel from other people's perspectives how my interaction with them made them feel and it was damn obvious that it was on mostly on a negative tone but that's because i was mostly geared negatively right so if i'm going to be like mostly geared in that way i'm going to also make others feel that way although once again that's up to them how they feel about things too we talk about like that power like we decide how we feel but i knew that my presence around others wasn't good. It was obvious that what I was causing was not good. So I saw it in a way that was so highlighted that it was obvious that, oh shit, I got to change this. Then I saw that we have this, I call like a blueprint or some sort of like this uh, contract, if you will, with ourselves as far as, okay, these are going to be the challenges. We have like a set of challenges that we're going to try to overcome. I know one for me was patience. So what I would do is because patience was something I wanted to work through, I would always be given something to be impatient about. (laughs) So it wasn't about like 
freaking out, being angry and being impatient. It was, I had to learn to actually become more patient through waiting for things and other people. So I kept getting things to always test my patience. Now that I know it's a part of my blueprint, when something like that comes up, I'm now consciously a lot more patient than I would normally have been without knowing it. So it's the knowing it's it. So much passion, Jeff. What's that? You have so much passion. Uh, you yeah. have so much passion. It's hard to have patience when you have so much passion. Well, I know. Yeah, I mean, come on now. Let's get shit done. Yeah. Like, what's going on? Why are you guys being so slow? Yeah, I, I get it. So, like, when you, yeah, knowing your challenges makes it easier to work on them, right? So right. the first goal is to try to figure out what they are. Because if you don't know what they are, that's the first thing. But you should, like, you kind of get an idea. when If you're 40, you should have an idea of the challenges <laughs> that you've had and, and what, like which ones keep coming around, right? Mm -hmm. And if you don't, then write them down, like figure them out. What are the things that keep coming around? Because those are going to be, the, those are going to keep coming until you get it right. Right. And did they you need to uh, come too. Yeah. Did you travel as well through like a tunnel? Uh, you had a life review kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Were... I wouldn't like travel. Oh. Like I was brought to a, a, a bright room more or less. Oh, and I then I was brought in front of a couple beings. So it was kind of like an interaction, but my brother was there who, who passed the, the year previous and he was there and it was more like um, the communication around whether I wanted to go back or not. That was really the idea of the beings was, okay, like you can, you don't have to go back, but we would advise you do, which... I already made the decision to go back because now I knew what I needed to do. So I kind of knew that I wanted to go back, but I saw like, I saw what my future could be if, if I were to go back. So I was given that a glimpse into the future of Jeff, like a Jeff 2.0, if I got my shit together. Right. So it's like, okay, <laughs> if you go back and you, and you get your shit together and you do the right things, then there's, this is the possibility of where you could end up and what you could be doing in your life. And instead of actually causing harm for people, you can actually be of service and help a lot of people. Mm. So it's like, so it was pretty obvious that I, I wanted to go back and fulfill that and, and, and do what I needed to do. So it was pretty easy for me to decide to go back. Jeff, when you talked with your uh, brother, I'll let you go, Christian, after that. When you talked with your brother, were you convinced that it was your brother or was it Absolutely. a made up? Absolutely, 100%. It wasn't just like the appearance, it was the energy, it was, it was him. There's there no way around it. Yeah. There couldn't be like, you know, it's like, oh, you were deceived by a demon or some shit. You know, it's yeah. like, no. <laughs> <laughs> just no. There was nothing of deception. Like, you know, like when you're there, it's not like, oh, I had to be smart enough to know whether I was being deceived by the devil. Like, no. Yeah. It doesn't, that doesn't even occur. It's so, you know what I mean? Like, you wouldn't and, even. And you're convinced, it's not, you're convinced it's not a made up, um, you know, that it was a real shared place, that it was really your brother and it wasn't Absolutely. just all in your head. I mean, if it was yeah. all in my head and I saw everything I did and all what that, the results it had afterwards, I mean, that's a pretty good story with, I don't know where that would come from. That would give me all that, that actually is real that I never knew of before. Yeah. So what, you know what I mean? Like, I often <laughs> tell people to like, I, I got into like kind of a debate with a skeptic and the moment what actually stopped him was when I asked him, I said, listen, prove to me right now that we're really having this conversation. And he couldn't do it. And he laughed. And I'm like, it's just that perception. It's just a weird thing. You know, it's real because, you know, yeah. when you're dreaming, you know, when you're not dreaming, you know, and yeah. even then. Uh, but my I don't even need it to be like, you know what yeah. I mean? I don't need it to be for others or. Right. Like, I don't, it doesn't matter. It's as real as you're right. The conversation we're having now, it's as real to me as this is real to me. It's the same thing. Right. And my so, question uh, was pretty much about the telepathy only because, or that, that kind of communication interaction, because I've had uh, people's deceased loved ones come to me and I've had communication and it's only gotten stronger whenever I decide to meditate. Um, Cause usually sure. I can't control it. It just happens. Um, and I want to know what that was like for you before I say anything, but like, uh, like in what way in terms of like, is it kind of like a knowing because I know it's not really, they're not speaking with their mouths, 
You know, it's just kind of like this, like a download is the best way. Oh, well, it's heard. It's heard in your mind right? as clear as it would be through your ears. Okay. Yeah. So it's like you are hearing it. It's just not through the ears, but it's as clear in your mind as you did hear it. It's the same thing. That makes sense. It's heard, but heard in a way that the mind understands it without the ears. Yeah. I can't really describe it better than that, but that's like, it's that's beyond. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. clear what it is. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Just, I only ask for me because I'm trying to see like how that information comes through for me because sometimes it's kind of like a knowing. It's weird. Like I know who the energy is and then it's just, I just know what they yeah. mean without them. And sometimes like even being like mediumship and stuff like where people will say, speak with spirits, yeah. a lot of it's archetypal. Yeah. So like messages come through in, in imagery and pictures more than it does in words. Right, right. Usually it's pictures. That makes sense. Where I think it's easier. That makes yeah. sense. Actually, <clears throat> Jeff, uh, I just want to quickly tell you and everybody uh, my near death experience. And then I want to ask you a couple burning questions. Yes. Um, Okay, I, I um, about uh, 20, 20 years ago, I, I was practicing karate, and I came out of karate, and the locker room was empty, and I got up after doing some stretches, and all the blood rushed out of my head, yeah. and I passed out, and I, I woke up, uh, and, and remember hearing the crush of my skull hit the concrete floor, I remember hearing that echo through the concrete, through the locker room, yeah. and I checked, I was bleeding out of the back of my head, I didn't know where I was. I walked over to the mirror and I started remembering where I was and what was going on. But I looked into the mirror and I remember being in a black place. I describe it as a dark place, but it wasn't scary dark. It w didn't feel like visually like being in a dark room. It was just like a neutral place. And I made a decision to continue living. And I remember distinctly there was a distinct path. Do you want to? die or do you want to keep living and I decided to keep living yeah and I knew in that moment that for sure you decide when you live or die and I've been re I didn't had that theory for a lot a lot of times in my life like I woke up on the highway when I was driving straight into a median and I swerved out of the way at the last second uh, and and different things that were showing me that you you had that control and plus I always use the example of movies where the the guys like tell my wife I love her and <laughs> And then he dies right after that. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it's obvious you have some control of when yeah, you live or die. Yeah, we get some exit points, like where we offer ourselves mm -hmm. a certain amount of exit points where we can take, depending on the soul, because it's all different. Some souls yeah. might even choose just one exit this way; nothing else will happen but that way, because that's what they chose. Others will give it like it's more of like open, where it could happen this or this way or whatever. It doesn't you know? It depends on the soul, I think what they choose. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I agree that we give ourselves exit points. Right. Jeff, I need to ask you, do you think that the physical world is really physical material stuff? Or do you think it's all mental it's all in some entity's mind? It's all energy. I mean, like it's all it's energetic. It's all energy. Vibration. So I mean, ultimately, ultimately, everything's all energy. If that's what energy. you're asking, so yeah, that energy really will to... slow down, right? Slow down. No, what I'm asking is, no, what I'm asking is the difference between materialist viewpoint, where physical stuff is the bottom level, and everything arises out of that, and they think that our brain creates consciousness, which is wrong in my opinion. No. But, but, but I'm I'm saying is is the material world the base level, or is mm -hmm. You know, is something else the base level? Is well, material no, just... like, no, like our material world, like this, I think this is the low like, level, like, but I don't think it's the base yeah. level, but I think it's a lower, yes, slow down energetic level. Think of it as water versus ice. Ice is, oh. is the same as water. It's just, it's slowed down to the point where it becomes solid, but it's still water. So it would be like the so, base, so... the idea of that. It's a low level, but that doesn't mean that um, spirits arise from that level. No, the physical. Not arise. I wouldn't say spirits arise. No, not from it. But like, there it depends on how you want to look at it. Because there's different levels and different realms and different energies and different densities and different dimensions. So there's all of these differences between energetic structures. The energy or spirits or souls, if you will, are, 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 are on a whole different, they're a different thing, depending on the soul. But 
we come through and we can go into certain realities and have certain experiences in certain realities. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, kind of. And, and I'm, I'm wondering, like, what, what's the role of the brain? Because, you know, we currently are thinking... The brain is just to perceive, right? It's just to think, to perceive ourselves in the reality, right? Like, I mean, there's many roles of the brain, ultimately, but we're here to use it to explore this reality, really, ultimately, where the consciousness of us is on a, is on a bigger level from the soul, where that's a different form of experience for the brain. Let's say the brain is doing its best to survive the reality where the soul knows it doesn't have to survive. It's experiencing a reality. Right. And the brain interacts with the soul. Is that correct? Yeah. To say? Yeah. The soul and the brain, they interact to some degree, I would say ultimately to some degree, or it's like it more perceives. I think the brain is more of a perceiver. Maybe yeah, it's like a it's tool. Like observing reality, you know, kind of observing it moment by moment. Like what we talked about maybe. with filter theory, how like the brain is like a reducing valve for consciousness. It's like the tool that like uh, consciousness uses or the soul uses to facilitate this body to keep. The yeah, body it's, bio it's, bio yeah. it's biology, though. It's, it's like a part of the human construct, this biological meat suit. Mm -hmm. The brain is just a part of the, the suit that we're wearing that the soul goes into to explore this reality. So the biology is a part of this reality where let's say that it's like an avatar. You can go and jump in another body that might not even have a brain or has something so different, but it's because that's the avatar you're in experiencing that reality. The kind of the way I see it, like right. these bodies, like, you know, that's another idea. Like, Oh, you know, God created us to be all perfect. It's like, are you, are you fucking kidding me? Look at these things. These <laughs> things are like a, a horrible, a really bad design, <laughs> like really bad. <laughs> like, these are not good godly designs in any way, yeah. shape or form. Agreed. Uh -uh. I, I would say that all the time. I'm like, so Oh my God. They, yeah, they're God very limiting. Suck. Like these bodies are, are beyond limiting. They're just so limited. Yeah. And then the soul almost like it, it's almost like you get trapped in it, like a jail. We're almost like putting our souls in these little prisons and walking around in our own little prisons because that's kind of what it's like here. Yeah. It's just, it's odd. That's why ND ears talk that's about all, like uh, a leaving sort of, body. It just feels so expansive. Yeah. And they're like, oh, I felt free. Like I was free. The shackles. Yeah, and then we went back. It's like, it's like getting, it's like getting released from jail and being put right back in. It's kind of horrible. <laughs> <laughs> You would, you would, you would, you're pretty sure that the soul doesn't come from the body. Is that correct? No, not at all. Not at all. Even, right. even like, let's say that you're, um, you're being created within the womb of your mother. The soul doesn't even enter that body until sometime before the birth. The soul isn't even in there for most yeah, part of it being developed. That. Right. So the soul doesn't come in, let's say, until about eight and a half months. And then it comes in to get birthed in. That's what I've learned too. My own wow, research. That's amazing. Yeah. To think about. yeah. Yeah. So the body okay. has nothing to do with the soul. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Nothing. That's good, good to say that because that's where we're at right now with materialist science. We think that the soul is created by the brain. That is so fucked people... up. Who is saying that shit? That's so crazy. The thing is, they that's don't not... even have proof. Cool. They have no proof for that. <laughs> even the, the no scientists today yeah, can they... prove how consciousness is created by the brain. They don't know. No, they can't. They'll never. They never will be able ever to prove it because it's not true. They'll go and search. Because right, they're coming from a perspective that is missing out on so many pieces of the puzzle that they're like, like they they don't have like they're coming from just the worst place of trying to solve something mm -hmm. that. They're already coming from false information on it, so they're never going to get there. It's a belief system. Yeah. And well, I, I often say that I think it's obvious why they, they have that misunderstanding because, like you said, this is a low-level energy. All the physical objects, they seem so stable. You yeah. know, they're so much more stable than our human emotions. Yeah. They're darting in and out all the time. Yeah. It, why is that? And that makes us, leads us to believe that it's, that's where things are coming from, from that stable ground, you know? Mm -hmm. Sure. But I mean, does it, that it's like trying to teach an ant English, I guess. There's certain, pers you know, from a certain perspective, things just aren't going to be understood from a certain level, right. I guess. I mean, yeah. like when you say yeah. stable, like everything is so stable, it is stable because it's dense. But if you, you mean, like I said, if you pull it back and you, you realize that actually it's just energy vibrating at a certain frequency, 
Exactly. Right. Though I think scientists are there, aren't they? They, they they're that getting. Out. They're actually getting there, and they're actually putting out platforms like Gaia and um, Unified TV, which they're having people, physicists, scientists who understand this already and are like going more into this. That we are actually souls. ET beings communicating this information and they're sharing this, which is awesome yeah. to see because that never was a thing before and they get it. So they're, they're talking yeah. about string theory, parallel realities, how that's starting to fit in with the soul being, you know, coming from an eternal source that. Well, was, I think that there's yeah. like, you know, there's a lot of, you know, when it comes to like science or whatever, they're, they're really far behind. They're right. going to be really, I think, shocked by people that are so far ahead of them that have nothing to do with science at all. Right. Yeah. Rays are going to be like, what? Because it, what? Like, what? <laughs> and that's what's happening. They're finding out and they're like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, mediums and other people have been saying this stuff, you know, spiritual people yeah. for years. And I've been ignoring oh. them, just like all the other people <laughs> that are super. We've yeah. been ignoring those people for a long time. <laughs> yeah. When, when I. Well, yeah, no, you're right. They're, 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 they were the crazy, the kooks. It's even almost like conspiracy theories mm -hmm. now. Say what you will, but the more, you know, the more time goes by. It just those theories become reality, and everyone forgets that it was once a conspiracy theory. Right? Like they, for, it's mm -hmm. like they forget. Hey, you know, last year that was a conspiracy. You know that, right? Now it's like a reality. So are you gonna like, you know, tie that in as it once was, and now it's not? Right. It's just weird. That's a good I think way people to put it. are humans have short memory spans. Yeah, and when I left my body, it wasn't a full blown NDE or anything, yeah. but it was so real and apparent to me. There was no question. It was just, I know now I'm not my physical body. Yeah. I know. And then once you have that experience, I was just like, I don't need to be, I don't any, need anyone to prove that this is true. Where do I go from here? Exactly. That's what happens. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So let's say like you, you go out in the woods, right? I mean, I've, I've, I've said this to Christians before and it's kind of funny. It's like <laughs> you go out into the woods and you met Bigfoot, right? And, but everything tells you that Bigfoot's not real, but you went and had a conversation with Bigfoot. Are you going to let other people tell you that you're wrong and it's not real because they just haven't gone to understand that he exists? Are you going to believe your own eyes, your own communication the whole time, the whole day you had with this creature? Like right. you've you got to be able mm -hmm. to start thinking for yourself, right? And be able to take, take what you've experienced as being your own truth, no matter what all the so-called scientists and all the so-called, and I mean so-called smart people out there, and I mean so-called, or like the half-baked exactly. intellectuals, out there think it doesn't really matter what's real is real right what you went through what you had it might be need to be like you might have to like dial it down a little bit what it means for you but an experience is an experience for yourself i agree jeff uh one more burning question for you and by the way what i meant for consistency uh w w by consistency is that everything is so stable that you can look away and have all these emotions and get afraid or something and you can yeah. look back and, and the physical world will remain consistent. It, it will not morph and change based on really? your internal mentality. It does, though. They've already proven that with water. When you look at water a certain way, it changes the structure. Right. I, That's I, what I was telling you. brought you. that up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, question for you is, it actually is about water, and it's about yeah. sun and water. What do you yeah. – because I'm trying to figure out this, my relationship with the sun – now that I've learned about near-death experiences, they always describe sure. uh, in a near-death experience that the light is coming towards them. They describe it as light, that is the source, as being okay. light. And now when I'm now when I feel the sun, I feel like I'm. Well, scientists believe that the sun is the source of all life in the physical universe. Um, it, what like is the sun's sun. relationship? Well, it's, yeah, it's, our it's, sun. It's, well, it's electricity. It's electric. It's electricity. So it's a source of a, of a generating force of energy and electricity, right? That's what it is. That's yeah, why it helps are... grow the plants and the trees, and it keeps everything alive. You know, you know what they say: that? the risen, our yeah. risen savior in the light of the world. That's the sign in the sky, not Jesus, but that's why I say like our risen savior. It rises so that we survive, and the light of the world. It is the light of the world. It brings light to the world. But it's just electricity, I would say, energy, the source of it's energy. Like, it, feels, it, feels more, it feels more than that to me. It feels like magical somehow when I'm absorbing sure. it, when it's coming in. And I, I feel like a spiritual connection through the sun. And yeah. 
Is it is the light analogous to the light that you see in an NDE? And I, I don't know if you saw light in your NDE. Yeah, I did. Everything, the same? But it wasn't light. It wasn't light. It wasn't like warm light that you would get from like a lamp or a sun or a bulb. It didn't, it wasn't, it was like, it wasn't light in that sense. It was like between the difference between, I don't know, light versus dark. It was just light, but it wasn't warm, dark. It wasn't warm, hot light. I don't know how else to yeah, say it. Like I, it was just bright. It's just bright light, bright. It allows to see right. nothing, but nothing else so you exists. Don't have, you don't have a changed relationship with the sun. Now that you've been well, I, gone through all these, scriptures. I actually do with this son, but that's only from what I understand about the story of it. But my relationship is different in the story sense, but not in the sense of like how I feel like it. It I don't know, like what it does here. Yeah. Um, the okay, yeah. Okay. Thank yes, you. the moon yeah. and the sun. Absolutely, I see them very differently. Very differently. Then which which parts do you see differently? Like the moon and the sun, yes. Like we have a relationship with the moon. I mean, the moon cycle is the same as a female's um, menstrual cycle. It's that moon is it it it, it goes with our emotions and it, it changes the, mm -hmm. the, the the tide of the ocean. That moon is very very important to the earth in a way that we're never we're not being taught right. at all. I agree. So yeah. and then I think that the sun is is no no different in the sense of how important it is for us too. So yes, the relationship is changing, even with the stars as well. But the sun and moon specifically, our relationship needs to be um, maybe redefined for what they actually are and how they actually affect us here. Yeah. Right. How about water? Do you, do you, is the same category for you? It's it's just physical stuff because I'm starting to see water as uh, as um, you know the source of life. It and also I, I heard a quote that changed my perspective, which is humans were created so water could walk on land. Yeah, so water so started, too is like it's it's almost receptive. So for me, when I'm in water, I'm more receptive to all kinds of stuff. My medium teacher told me I'm too. More, too. I'm, yeah, I'm a lot more sensitive to things. So water is like a receiver; it can be used as that and such. I use cold water. I do like cold water. I got I live on a river here, so I do cold water plunges. Me too, Jeff. That helps me as well. So yeah, I like everything's different. Everything now is different than what it was. My relationship to things, especially nature, animals, other people, life, it's all fucking changed for me, all of it. I'm just a lot yeah. more aware of it all now than I was before, and I have a relationship now with it that I never did before, we'll say. I go into the cold, uh, I go for cold swims, you know, every night I, I swim, yeah. and I Good. go in the cold water underneath, and I look up at the, the dividing line between the water and the air, Yeah. and to me that seems so magical and, and spiritual. Uh, yeah. Regardless of how our science has reduced it, to say it's just H two O. For me, no, it's, it's like two different worlds. Well, it's like the difference it so the, right before your eye and then after, like the liquid that separates reality from within your eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about yeah. that. <laughs> it's like we're seeing through liquid, right? Our eyes. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, exactly. I, just got that, I just got the idea of your eyeball. The way you're talking about it, we're seeing through like. <laughs> Liquid, yes. but anyway, yes. Do you, think, do you think spirits were originally injected into water? Like scientists believe that life started on Earth uh, in water, in the ocean? Is no. water a conduit for spirits to be injected into? Oh, well, water plays a real... No, I think water plays a big role. Like, we're like, look, at, we're, we're in water in the womb, right? Like, we're floating in water in, our, in, our, in the womb before we're even here. I think water has yeah. a huge role within the, the our uh, yes our biological essence for sure. How much of a role does it have to do with our spirit? I don't know. I have no idea. Bio, uh, biologically, yeah. though, yes, water is a big part of our life. No yeah. doubt about it. As I mean, a, we start off, the water breaks, and we're born. Right? Like we're in water. Like yes, absolutely. You're drinking water all the time. Just to, oh yeah. Well, and yeah. that's another thing too. Like most people are dehydrated, so I do my best to drink about three liters of water a day. And I'm telling you, since I drink three liters of water every day, my whole mental state, my whole energetic state, my whole everything state has completely changed physically. So I think a lot of people's issues is they just don't drink enough water. If you do that, okay, drink three liters of water for the next week. I'll guarantee you, you're going to feel so goddamn different. You're going to be like, whoa, what the <laughs> hell? I'm, I'm telling you, it's so simple. Yeah. 
I'm trying to force wise. myself to drink more water now. Like I don't even. You buy gotta juice. do it. You gotta do it. Just just go and drink water. Obviously, get get as clean as good natural you know water as you can. But do that. Just try it for a little bit, long enough for you to be like, wow, I notice a huge difference in the way I think, the way I sleep, the way I, everything, the way I function. You'll notice a big difference. We need water because what I think it does for me, I have like ADD. So what it does is like I always feels like my brain is a little static. And so it just dials all that static down and allows me to think better. Everything, I'm telling you, I think a lot of people don't realize the importance of water. Yes, water is so damn important. So, so but it's, I think it's like the right kind of water too. You know, stay away from all the shitty, you know, yeah. chlorine and all that other shit that's going on with the water, but right. some nice, clean spring water, you know, mineral-based water. As I understand it, it whirl. when it comes to... Uh before we move on to yeah. other stuff in relation to water, um, this is just what my understanding is based on the beings that came through and uh, other research that I've done is that like when Aaron was saying that, because yeah, water is important. That's what I was telling you too, Kevin. It is important, but yeah. in, re in relation to the spirit, I don't know. I know it is a conductor. That's what my medium teacher who was teaching me stuff to help yeah. me was saying as well. But in relation to spirit, Aaron, who came through, explained that we're all beings of light, that everything, even the water, is light. Everything is made up of light. You're a light being. When you're in the physical, you're a light being and substance. And then well, energy that, is yes, electricity, exactly. and electricity has mm -hmm. to do with light. Exactly. So, yes. And yeah. that's my understanding of it. And um, before we go, um, how, do that. for anyone watching, uh, how can people reach you? I'll put it up on the screen here, too, for anyone who's... Uh, interested in looking you so, up. So I have a, I have an email that people can reach out to. Um, I you know I'll do my best to respond to emails depending on how many I get, but I'm pretty good at responding over time. Um, the night sky academy at gmail.com is what I use for that night was with a K. So it's pretty simple. And then um, my website is the nights www.thenightskyacademy.com. You can check it out. I'll put that I up. offer like mentorships and stuff that I do, but I haven't honestly done them in quite a while and I kind of shut them down. But right now I'm building a, um, it's going to be more of an online, it's more of a digital course. And what we were talking about earlier as far as like going in yourself and actually doing the necessary work of finding, figuring out who you are, what are your beliefs and moving yourself forward. So I'm building a course in that where it, it, it 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 takes all the topics of the different bodies and it takes all the topics of what you need to kind of like figure out what's going on, what you believe in changing all that stuff. So I know when that course is done, it's not done yet. I could send you a link or whatever, but ultimately I don't really have too much to offer, but they can get a hold of me through the email. Okay. Sounds good. I'll put it up on the screen. Sounds like a lot to offer. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. I just like right now I'm just in the midst of building the course. So that'll be, I'm excited to get that out because there's so much in there. Also with the course too, I'm working with a neuroscientist. So she's working hand in hand with me on all that stuff. So not that. only do we got my own, like my own kind of experience based stuff, but I have science backing me with everything that I'm doing. So it's a good collaboration between me, myself, and a, and a, she's a PhD in neuroscience. I so saw that. It's That's really awesome. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's Fantastic. very cool. But all right, Jeff, I appreciate your time. Thank you um, for giving us the time of day to speak with us, and I look forward to... Uh, it, it, it's an honor, Jeff. Yeah, it, it, it really yeah, is. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. You're the first yeah. person I thought of, so... I appreciate right it. Right on. I appreciate that. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, like I said, good luck on the success of the, the, the podcast and everything. I'm sure you guys will do fine. Yep. It's an interesting world, that's for sure. And there's so Absolutely. much to share. And it's like, it's just opening up. So I can only imagine where this is all going. Right. You know, I can only imagine. Right. It's going to be interesting. I'm, I'm excited. All right. Do that. Right on. Take care, guys. Right. We'll talk to you very soon. Take care. Have a good all night. Right. Yep. Bye bye. Bye.